Hey everybody, Mr. Kobe here, and we're going to do a little experiment here. I've got five glass flasks, actually one of them is plastic, but still, five flasks. And um, you can see flask number one, 50 milliliters of warm water, and I'm going to add two grams of baker's yeast, mix it all up. Flask number two is going to be 50 milliliters of warm water. I'm going to add two grams of yeast, and I'm going to add one gram of sugar. Mix it all up. Flask number three, 50 milliliters of warm water. I'm going to add two grams of yeast and three grams of sugar. Mix it all up. Flask number four, 50 milliliters of really hot water, boiling hot. Two, uh, two grams of yeast and one gram of sugar. Mix it all up. And flask number five, 50 milliliters of cold. There's still ice crystals in it. That's how cold it is. 50 milliliters of cold water, two grams of yeast, and one gram of sugar. So I'm going to set the camera down, and I'm going to go ahead and mix all of these, and then I'll be right back. Okay, now that I went ahead and mixed all of those together, notice that there's a balloon next to each flask. In a moment, I'm going to put the camera down, and I'm going to attach the balloon to the top of the flask. So the balloon will capture any gases that are given off by the yeast in this particular process. So I'm going to go ahead and stop filming. I'm not going to be able to put the balloons on while I'm filming. I'm going to stop filming, and I'll come back and let you see what I've done. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've attached a balloon to each of the five flasks. And again, there's yeast inside, and the yeast inside might give off a gas throughout this process, and if so, the gas should accumulate inside of the flask and we'll see what happens to the balloons over the course of some time while I sit here and, and wait. So just to give you an idea of where we are, the flasks are sealed so no gas can escape and we're going to go ahead I'm going to go ahead and stop filming and I'll come back in a little bit to show you some of the results. Okay, everybody, so it's actually been about an hour um, since we started, and you can see that flask number one was given two grams of yeast, zero sugar, 50 milliliters of warm water, and you can see that the, uh, the balloon did not inflate at all. Flask number two was given two grams of yeast, one gram of sugar, and 50 milliliters of warm water, uh, and you can see, wow, look at that, the bubble of the balloon has inflated. Uh, you can see that flask number three was given two grams of yeast, three grams of sugar, and 50, mill 50 milliliters of warm water. And you can see that, yes, the balloon has inflated. Flask number four was given two grams of yeast, one gram of sugar, and 50 milliliters of boiling, boiling hot water after an hour. The water is not hot anymore, but at the time was boiling hot, and you can see the balloon did not inflate. Flask number five was given two grams of yeast, one gram of sugar, 50 milliliters of cold water, and again you can see that the balloon has not inflated. Now let me go back to flask two and three. They were both given warm water. Sorry, I forgot to add the word warm right here. But they were both given warm water, and if you notice the setup, they're the same, except for flask two was given one gram of sugar. Flask three was given three grams of sugar. Let's look at the balloon comparison. They both have balloons that inflated, and I'm not sure if you can tell the difference, but the one, uh, the green one, the one on the right, flask number three, it's actually a little more inflated than the red one on the left. What I'm going to do in a moment, I'm going to put down the camera, and I'm going to take a string, and I'm going to just kind of wrap the string around each balloon. 
and then I can measure the circumference of the balloon by measuring the length of the string. So if that doesn't make sense, I'll show you what I mean in a moment, but I need both my hands to do this. I'm gonna just wrap a little string around the green balloon and then measure the length of the string. And then I'm gonna wrap a string around the red balloon and again, measure the length of the, of the string. That'll give me the circumference of the balloon. So I'm gonna stop, I'll be right back. Okay, and so here you can see the results. Uh, these two pieces of string I wrapped around, the one on top I wrapped around the red balloon, and the one on the bottom I wrapped around the green balloon. So the one on top was flask number two. And when you pull the string tight, it comes to a circumference of about 22 centimeters. So then I wrapped the string around the balloon, and then I measured the length of the string. And it was about 22 centimeters all the way around. Now, for flask number three, that was the bottom piece of string. When you pull it tight, it comes to about 26 centimeters, 26 centimeters. So again, that string, I wrapped around the entire balloon, and then I measured the length of the string, and has a circumference, the balloon has a circumference of about 26 centimeters. So that allows me to quantify my data. I can actually have a quantity now, a numerical value that I can measure. Okay, so based on not only the observations of how much the balloon's inflated, but also the measurements that you now have. Again, with flask number one, there's nothing to measure. So uh, zero would be our circumference of the balloon. There's nothing to measure. Same with flask number four and flask number five. There's, there's nothing to measure, really. So the measurements really are in flask number two and flask number three. All right, so we're going to go ahead and finish the rest of this activity. You can probably answer the questions in your lab handout now.